All right, Barb, here we are, Marketing Share, and we are going to do a topic today where it's just you and me, right? Yeah, that's always fun. I know. <laughs> but as we were talking about this, getting ready for this, um, the reason we wanted to uh, talk about this particular uh, topic today is because we've come across it so many times just in past episodes. I've come across it personally just in my own experience, and I think this is um, kind of a, a big thing, and I... The way I think of it is it's, it's a, one of the biggest mistakes that marketing uh, leaders make. So I think we should talk about this one. What do you think? Right, right. I agree. And um, this is really about once you get into that marketing seat, that leadership seat for the first time, what do you do now? And there are a couple of key pitfalls that we are trying to help people avoid in that space. And I think that it's not intuitive for a new marketer to think about this. So I, I think it makes sense for us to go over it, right? Here, I'm just going to jump into it, right? I think what happens is when a marketer kind of steps into a new marketing leadership role, it could be at a new company, certainly with a new team. And for a lot of times, if, especially if it's the first time that you're leading the team, I think one of the biggest mistakes that you can make is to just spend too much time focusing on doing the marketing. You know, what I mean by that is I think what happens is it's natural. You join a marketing team, you join a company, and there's obviously high priority, urgent things that need to get done, right? Whether it's starting up a campaign, redesigning the website, sometimes heck, the company even needs, um, right. you know, to be named or to come up with the, the, the brand and everything like that. So you just have a tendency, you, want, you just want to jump right into it. But if you deep dive into that, and you just immerse yourself in all that, you're not setting yourself up for success. Um, and that, I think, is one of the biggest pitfalls that you can run into. Right. So number one, the new marketing leader who gets so excited and starts to dig down deep into marketing and forgets that there is a functional leadership team out there yeah. that is now expecting you to come into a new role and to you to be that expert amongst peers in the organization that you may or may not have had experience doing before. This is a really big one. And, you know, this can also be a pitfall for marketers who've been in a company for a long time. So they think they have an awareness. Yeah. But now they step into that leadership seat and they really have a new job. They still have the current job which is making sure marketing's investment is the right place, making sure your brand is excelling, making sure you're setting up sales for success. You still have that job, but you have a new job, which is now you have to let others, your peers and your boss, of course, understand what you're doing. And you don't get, you don't get in the weeds about it because they don't care about how you make the sausage. You have to kind of let them think about your business in a way that's appropriate for their level, right? Yep. So what's your investment? What are you doing with um, the brand? How are you excelling the business? You have to talk in a different way to that audience. And it's really a little bit like, you know, we manage down, we manage down, we manage up to our bosses mm -hmm. and we manage across to our peers. Mm -hmm. Yep. I think the other way to think about this is if you just deep dive and go all in on marketing because, oh, shoot, now I run everything, right? Now I got to get my hands around everything that's going in marketing. What you're forgetting is that you don't just run marketing, right? You need to lead the business. You're now as much a business leader as any other um, leadership team member. So you have to connect to what the business is doing and then show everyone why all the things in marketing are helping to drive that. And if you're not doing that, that's also another way that you can, you, you really should be aware that, oh, hold, hold on a second, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of going too deep. I need to make sure that I'm still connecting in to at a business level. Yeah, I totally agree with that. One of the other mistakes I see some marketers making is assuming all other peers know all about marketing. And just like you don't know about every level of R&D that you may be working with or every level of IT, you kind of have to explain it to people in a way that's respectful, right? And mm -hmm. you know, I hear, I've heard marketers sometimes say, oh, can you believe they thought this and that? And it's like, they're not in your business. So <laughs> yeah, they're making an assumption about it. Help them learn and help them understand. So right, I, right. I see that out there as well. And ultimately, there's a few biases that you see around marketing, right? That I always like for people to turn around in the business when they first get into that seat. And one of those is, oh, those guys just spend a lot. <laughs> 
you know, those marketing folks are in charge. Yes, you're in charge of spend and of investment in the brand and in the business, but you need to show others in the business that you are a good steward of that spend and that you know more than anyone does about the ROI on that spend for the business as Mm -hmm. it relates to your business goals, to your point. Yeah, I think also maybe sometimes there could also be a little bit of this trepidation that everyone's going to have their opinion on marketing. So now you have to deal with all these, you know, different opinions and almost challenges, but you have to almost like just accept that that's part of the job, right? If you want to lead marketing, then then you got to field those questions. That's part of what you do, right? It's it is providing a bit of the air cover for your team, but it is also doing that education to your peers on, hey, here's why we do these things. Here's the contribution. And and you ought to do the same thing with the other functions, right? So like ask R&D or ask engineering, you know, what's going on with the product? What's the development? Um, You know, ask those other questions too, because that's also part of you learning the business and being connected into the business. Yeah, I I think that's absolutely true. And uh, although I will have to say, I do believe that one bias, right? Because we're all consumers and therefore we all have an opinion of what good marketing is. (laughs) You know, it's not like the heavy R&D guy, you know, you know, everybody has an opinion of what that looks like, right? Right, right. (laughs) So you do end up getting a lot more opinions on the marketing side, but that's okay. That's okay. Um, it, it, as long it's, as you job, set yourself right? up as the expert in that space. And that's, you know, a way you speak with some folks. And sometimes I feel like it's a little bit of education for people too, right? We do this because X, Y, Z, and that's why, you know, we're focused on this area versus the one that you just mentioned. Yeah. Hey, actually, one thing I want you to share the term that you use, because I like the way you use it. The, the one merchandising, oh, right? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. A long time ago when I started actually in work, I had a great colleague who's a good friend said to me, you know, um, don't forget to merchandise your work. And I said, what do you mean? You know, I'm, I'm not, you know, my consternation is not all about, let me tell you what I've done today, right? But mm-hmm. it's really important as a marketer because, and it's important as any functional leader, because what you're doing is you're helping others understand when you have a win in the business and you're helping them join in the win. So merchandising your work isn't just about, you know, here's what we've done um, today. It's really, again, connecting the dots on here's what marketing's contribution is to the mm-hmm. business overall. And here's how to think about that contribution. We had a win this week because we had this great press release that got you know, 10 stories for the company. That's really hard to get. And that's really a great win for us. So you're helping others think about, you know, how you're doing in marketing and help them, you're giving them a perspective about it. So then they can return that perspective when they're talking about your work as well. Yep. Yep. And that's why I like that. I like the term merchandising, you um, merchandising what you do. So I love that. Here's another tip I would offer. If you find that you are not getting time with your CEO, like he keeps, he or she keeps rescheduling and you're trying to update him or her on what's going on in marketing. To me, that's, that's a red flag. There's always going to be a legitimate reason for it, especially heck, if you're like working at a startup, right? CEO is probably spending most of his or her time or a lot of his or her time trying to get the business off the ground, probably talking to VC, making sure that there's funding. So it's all legitimate, but you got to fight for a little bit of that airtime because when the CEO gets disconnected from what you're doing in marketing, that's when marketing then becomes at risk. We all worry about that, right? The statistic is like CMOs and head, heads of marketing are usually have the shortest tenure. So you got to fight against that. And so if you're not getting that airtime, that's a big cue. You have to be... um you have to advocate for yourself in order to get that time. You know, I I do sense um, more fear amongst the CMO ranks than I've ever seen in history. And it is partially because of this high turnover in the CMOs. But I think part of that, Alec, is also the CMO's job. So just mm-hmm. like we teach other people how to treat us, you kind of have to do the same thing with your business peers, right? Mm -hmm. So um, honestly, I don't think that there's ill intent in any of, you know, those kinds of issues sometimes. To your point, Mm -hmm. the CEO is really busy, etc. However, it is important that a marketer or any business leader share that with a CEO and help them be a better CEO to you. Meaning, Mm -hmm. you know, one idea that um, I've worked with um, with CEOs is, hey, let's do a one-on-one once every X, Y, Z, 
right? So the one-on-one time is your time to actually, you know, merchandise your work to the CEO, but also teach them how to be a great peer or superior to you. You know, here's Mm -hmm. what I need from you in order to excel this brand and this business. And sometimes, you know, you need a sounding board and you need guide their guidance, of course. So Mm -hmm. um, that's part and parcel to your success. And I think um, sometimes CMOs give that away a bit, right? And sometimes they need to be, um, they need to, to be grabbing that because that's important for their own success. Yeah, I agree. What else have we covered? Is there anything else? I think those are the key points I had. Yeah. uh, Merchandising the work, um, focus beyond your current learning and being a little bit bigger and learn more about the business overall. Yeah. And then, you know, I think that uh, we talked about this idea of managing up, managing down and managing across, which is really important when you get into that leadership. And then I would offer one last thing, which is, you know, sometimes marketers don't really listen to peers, functional peers, right? Because they might not have the expertise. And true, you do have the expertise. But I will tell you, um, and this is the same reason why we heard an innovation in some of our innovation talks, why you bring in functional leaders into new innovations and big pushes in your organization is Mm -hmm. because even if they don't have that expertise that you have, they can have a really valuable insight for you. So Mm -hmm. just because someone isn't in your business all day long, right? Doesn't mean they won't have an outsider great perspective that can accelerate your brand or your business or help you think about it in a new way. And I think that's really important. That's the benefit of the leadership team, right? The leadership team comes from functional areas that are completely different, but as a team, they all have expertise and they all offer something that's pretty valuable to each other as Mm -hmm. well as, you know, to the the team dynamic based on their expertise. So don't forget, you know, others who are functional leaders can give you some great advice and be great advocates for you in the organization. Yeah, absolutely. My my spin on that, the way the term I use is like, I think of it as curiosity. I think good leaders are the ones that are curious, not about just what they do, but about other stuff that's going on in the company. So be curious about the other functions, but then also welcome the curiosity from others. And here's a, a key advocate for you, or should be, right? Is this um, the CFO, right? You're the spender of the money. They're the steward of you know the corporate money uh, overall. And so it's really important for you guys to be in lockstep, I think, yeah. right? Because, and, and you'll get a take from that CFO too, as to how they feel about spend and how they feel about the investment this far. And you want them on your team. So bottom line is build that relationship, share with them, find out what's gone wrong from an investment, you know, perspective, tell them how you feel about investment, about it. You know, that's a person you need to be kind of hip to hip with just as you are hip to hip with your CMO or your, uh, your CEO and your sales lead. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So make sure those three, the revenue cycle (laughs) is in lock, lockstep. I always say. Yeah. It was a good topic. I think, you know, short and sweet, but powerful. And I like doing this. Yeah, me too. Anyway, um, so to all those new marketing leaders, you know, it's graduation time here in Chicago. My daughter's graduating. And you know what I'm thinking about when you go on to your next new adventure in life, right? So yeah. here's to all the new marketers who are going on to their next adventure. Hopefully this gives you a little bit of insight as to what you might want to avoid in your new adventure. And who knows, wherever you go in your world, um, your next adventure, you prob- this advice probably makes sense no matter where you're headed. I love that. 